Good morning. It's good to see you all. First, uh, youth choir and uh, their adult leaders, and even Stephen back. It's good. Uh, it's good to have them here with us. Um, they've done a yes, yes. They've done a great work around here already. Yesterday, helping with tornado relief, doing some work around the building, and so they've made this kind of a. Uh, many mission work, but they've impacted in great ways, and so we appreciate that. Uh, they've given acts of love, and today is about love. And as you've seen the video about love, we, what I want to remind you of this is that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And that is the God we worship today. That is the God we're doing this for today, the one who has come to us, a God who is Emmanuel, God with us. And we celebrate that today. So we're going to sing some songs of the season together, so if you would stand, and let's worship this God who is present with us today. The first Noel, the angel did say, was to serve. People send out Christmas cards. It started years ago, I believe, by Hallmark. Had to. And uh, every year, I like to look at those, open them up, and I appreciate every card that I get. Um, I appreciate all the thought behind it, and we really do. But every year, there's one card that I pick as the best. It's just the best. And this guy, his, he wins it every year. He's won it again. He has won again. Are y'all ready to see the unveiling of the greatest Christmas card man making every year? Ready? There he is. He's done it again. Two years ago, he was in a hot air balloon, one year NASCAR, and this year he is a shepherd holding a sheep. Oliver, you've done it again, buddy. Thank you. I appreciate it. He wins it every year. So uh, I literally look forward to it every year. My wife says, we've got the card. Okay, I can't wait to see what it is. Hey, also in our service today, we have the Grinch. Cindy Lou, is that her name? I don't even know. Cindy Lou who? She's back there. And uh, so after service, to, and, and Buddy the Elf somewhere too. There's Buddy the Elf over here. Yes. I always try to figure out who he reminded me of, and today it, it came clear. 
Um, so if you want some pictures of them after service, they'll be around and you can do that and hopefully we'll get the choir back with them after service, okay? This morning is our time of Advent, Advent season and we're doing this week is on love. And so those who are doing the readings for us, would you come forward, please? If you all will join me on the all portion of the reading. We light the candle of love as we reflect on the words, for God so loved the world that God sent his one and only son. We remember Mary's song. We remember Mary's song this morning and how she reflected on and responded to her love for God and God's work in the world. We reflect on the truth that Zechariah was silenced while a humble virgin teenager was allowed to sing. It upset the normal systems and elevated the voice of a peasant. This is a reminder to us that the kingdom of God looks different than the systems of the world. We are guided on a journey of seeking out the places where God is at work in unusual ways. We up, open up our ears to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit in unexpected places. With the love of God in our hearts, may we work to see the love of God at work in the world. God's love embraces all people, regardless of background, race, ethnicity, gender, or any other category we place upon others. Would you please stand with us as we continue to worship together this morning? A king like this, majesty like in a manger. A king like this, unto us is born.
to go to a time of prayer this week has been amazing. Yes. Great, great. The Lord's done a good work in what's Frank. He's done a good work in, in touching his eyes, and so we're grateful for that today. We celebrate that. Uh, this week's been really a crazy one in the state of Kentucky. Uh, as we remember, last weekend it was so deadly and ruthless as it ripped through cities and towns. But even more than that, the outpouring of the church, not just our church, but churches all around, has been amazing to see what God is doing in these places. And even people who don't even attend church have, have showed up to help, and uh, we've seen the outpouring of love. And uh, our church alone, through our church alone, there's been over $8,000 given on top of loading the trailer out here to send to Mayfield and Dawson Springs and Bowling Green. So I just want to say thank you to all of you who have, who have given, who have worked, who have uh, got stuff, who are going to be going on work teams. We'll be taking some work teams down in the future uh, to help with that. Uh, from the church here, and even uh, the Nashville group brought in stuff today, and so we're just grateful for everybody who has contributed to make a difference uh, in those areas that uh, are reeling right now. They're hurting and broken, and so to see people coming and doing things in love has made a difference for all those, and so we're grateful for that. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day you've given us, a day that we can be reminded, God, that you are love and that you uh, love us, and that you want to do something in our hearts and lives. And Lord, it doesn't matter whether we're living in that time of triumph or that time of tragedy, you are still with us. You're still working. And we celebrate all the ways you do what you do. We celebrate this morning uh, the touch you, you've put upon Frank, and uh, we're grateful for that. We celebrate the way you've embraced families that are broken and hurting, not only through tornadoes and and destruction, but Lord, just through loss of the season. It's been many in our congregations lost people who are dear to them. And we thank you, God, that you have been with them and they have been able to echo how you've been with them and, and tell others of how you've been present with them. And so, God, as we, we gather in this place, we know that we are absolutely dependent upon your love. And, and we need it more than anything, and you so graciously give it to us. And when I look around this crowd today, I see love. I see people loving each other. And we've done it as a church this whole week, finding ways to show love. And so I pray that all these things that will be done in these areas um, will really benefit the people in their lives. And Lord, even through the destruction, I pray that there'd be people come to know you as their Lord. And in the midst of this, they would see how you have truly been the light in the world, the light in the darkness. And God, I give you praise for this group that's here with us today, that they are, they are singing the songs of the season, but more than that, more than a performance, they are worshiping you and helping us worship you today. And Lord, that is what it's all about. The season, as much as we love the gifts and, and the times and the fun times and all the stuff that we do and all the food, all that stuff, more importantly, it's all about you, how you've come to us in love to show us the way, and to be our God. And so today, Lord, I know that you're the God for many people in this place who can echo that this week you have literally brought healing to them. For some, test results have come back, and they've been given good news, and they have shouted that praise to the heavens. Others, Lord, are still waiting, and as they anxiously wait, they trust in you. And so, the God, you are indeed our hope. You are our peace. You are our joy, and we give you praise for who you are today. We pray you use this time, uh, Lord, to speak to our hearts through song so that we can leave this place different than the way we came. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.
Sometimes when we think of the Lord, all we can do is sing. And I'm grateful for this group that's come and presented this to us in song today. Weren't they great? Uh, I even appreciate it more when teenagers use gifts God's given them to do something for the kingdom. And so I'm grateful for you all for doing that. It makes a difference. Well, I, I, have, I have something to admit to you today that I don't like to admit, and the Peasant King kind of reminded me of this, the series we've been in. And that is, I have watched Frozen way too many times. <laughs> and uh, in Frozen 2, Kristoff declares to Anna at one point that his love is not fragile. It's a pretty important plot line, but it's an idea that we often miss when we think, talk, or sing about love. So it might feel odd to read such a strong and powerful song on the week of Advent, and I'm getting ready to read it to you all, when we reflect on love, but it's fitting because the love of God isn't fragile either. It's not something that's going to be broken easily. It's something that came in powerful and unexpected ways, as we've been hearing about. It didn't enter into the world through the typical avenues of power and prestige. Rather, it came through a simple peasant girl with no claim to her name. And this story of the inbreaking of the kingdom of God, the truly the greatest love story ever told about God leaving the glory of heaven to take on humanity, is a story of strength and beauty displayed in unexpected ways. It's the story of a love that and sacrifice itself instead of wounding others. It's a story of mercy instead of judgment. It's a story of humility and humanity. It's a story of what love should be, strong and powerful in mercy and justice. It's a love story in the truest sense of the word, a story that continues today with us as we reveal the love of God and the ways we live in the world and continue to see the kingdom of God break through all around us, in us, and through us. This is the story of love. This is the God of love. I want to read this to you this morning. Mary had a song, a song of praise. And a lot of people skip over it this time of year. But it's very important. This is the words Mary decided to sing. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness, lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the wrench away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promises made to his ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. She was singing this song, and it really is a love song, a love song of what God is able to do in anyone. As we've gathered around this story today, as we think about this season, we are reminded that this is the God who comes to us, and he can do the unexpected in any of us. If we'll just simply say, yes, here I am, O oh Lord, here I am. As we gather in this moment, I think about love in Jesus' life. And it wasn't just in the fact he came incarnate in flesh and laid in a manger. It was that the whole story of his life, even to this point, but all the story of his earthly ministry was simply about love. And we got to a point in one time in his journey where he gathered in an upper room. And he gathered with his disciples up there. And I don't know, maybe, maybe if Mary was near, maybe she sings some of these. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. Maybe she broke out in song in that evening. But we do know as he gathered there, he showed his love for us once again. You've all been given the cups this morning. As he got around the table with those, even the one who would betray him, Jesus extended the bread. Would you take it out? It's 
So on that night they gathered, a reminder of how great his love is for us. Even the one who betrayed him, he extended the bread to. Because that's who our God is. And as he looked around the table at all these who would carry the gospel on, he said to them that night, out of my love, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. He then took the cup and lifted it up and said, this is my blood poured out for you and your sins. Take and drink. We are grateful for the sacrifice of love that God has given. We're all here today because of that sacrifice and that love. I'm going to pray, and after I pray this morning, the choir is going to come back up, and as you're exiting the building, they're going to sing one more song. You can stay in if you'd like to hear it. I think that'd be good. And, uh, and then when they're done, we're going to give them a Farmdale love, right? Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful that this story that we live by, this true story, this real story, is a story of great love, of great sacrifice, of mercy and grace. It's a story that reminds us that even in the darkest moment, as you've gathered around the table, even with the one who would betray you, you still extend your love. And we are a people who are grateful for that love that's come to us because each of us could tell our own story, and our story is one that is simply wrapped in the good news of the gospel. And Lord, if there's someone here today it's just not a believer yet, or they're not, they don't understand how great that love is. My, my prayer is that through this season, they would come to receive and accept your love for them. And they would enter into the process of what your love does, which is transform our lives. So we give you praise for this season. We'll celebrate around tables. We'll gather with people. Uh, we'll tell the story once again. We give you praise for being with us today and for loving us. We celebrate who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
quick check, guys. Church family, the Lord really put on my heart what these kids have demonstrated in a lot of people's world that you don't have a clue. He's already said about showing the love of Christ by just saying yes when you're called on. Just saying yes. I have a dear friend of mine, Jonathan Gray, who was overwhelmed because he kept on saying yes to the Lord about serving the people in western Kentucky. His home got overflowed with clothing of all shapes, sizes, colors. And literally, he's got a very large home, right? And lots and lots of clothes, right? With lots and lots of piles, piles and piles and boxes. And he's kind of OCD, and he wants everything organized. And he lived in this chaos because he said yes. And he just has taught me so much in the last six months. Talk about the Lord putting people in your life that you want to watch what they're doing because the Lord's really using them. Kids, the Lord really used you yesterday. Because every time one of those kids down in western Kentucky, they have nothing. You have, clo you have homes to go to, and you've got drawers full of clothes and closets full of clothes. They have nothing. And they know, and the Lord knows especially, that you took the time and effort yesterday because your leaders and your directors and your parents said yes. We want to help. And you went over there and you gave Jonathan, my friend, and all those adults around that watch you guys work so hard, you gave them all more hope that they can go out and do more for those kids. And every time one of those kids put on one of those clothes, they're going to be appreciative because they was given to them in the name of Jesus. And they're going to be thanking the Lord because of you. And I want to give a special applause for your effort yesterday. Merry Christmas to all of you. Merry Christmas.